Hey YouTube, it's Das Gregor for another Linux review for this new week. Today we'll be looking at Crunch Bang, which is a Debian flavored distro based off of the stable Wheezy distribution of Debian. It has been a great fun little distro to play with, very lightweight comes with OpenBox as its GUI manager. Um, not too much to worry about on the overhead. Works well. Haven't run into too many flaws or bugs. I mean, most of it's been very smooth. The installation's very easy. It comes on, you know, of course, your ISO here. You can go here to download CrunchBang from their website at crunchbang.org. And then from there, you're able if it will pop up to choose whether or not you have a 32-bit or 64-bit and go from there. Now this look and feel is sporting the Waldorf or as I would keep trying to call it the Waldorf because many many years ago in the late 80s early 90s I lived in Heidelberg Germany in the small village of Waldorf and so that's why I want to constantly be saying that this is the Waldorf release. Anyway, Crunchbang, like I said, is very lightweight. It doesn't come with very much overhead. Uh, very easy to install. The media was able to be placed onto a USB stick without any problems. It gives you a couple options when you boot up, which is a little different when you first boot up. A lot of times I like to change some of the boot structure so that it will boot in a little bit better resolution. Say for instance adding VGA equals 0x33A um, for instance for myself. You know just to give it a little bit better resolution. Doesn't give me any options to be able to change how that works. It pretty much just says do you want to run Crunchbang from the media or do you want to install it? If you run it from the media you get pretty much a working distro that you can look at and play with. You can't install it from what I could tell from logging into that particular section. However, once you reboot and choose the install, it goes into a very nice GUI based installation, which is easy to follow, easy to go through, easy to install, had no issues at all to getting it laid down on the computer. It worked very well flawlessly. Once, of course, it was laid down, it took nothing at all for me to edit my grub configurations from my master Linux side, reboot, and right on in we are. OpenBox, of course, does not have a menu system that one is used to seeing up above where you can click on it, but anywhere on the desktop, if you just right click, you will get your menu it pops up and you have the options of course to run a program go to terminal some of your basics web browser file manager etc I do want to bring note before I go into some of these menus that over here we have shortcut keys a little bit of system information CPU usage etc and of course these are really handy it's a little bit difficult to read uh, since it is kind of a gray on dark gray I think I would have rather had that more pronounced maybe white on dark gray and maybe there is a way to edit that I didn't really look into it too much once I figured those out some simple easy things to do such as super space to make the main menu or super tab to open up the client menu and terminal etc all from hotkeys that can help you out but going back to the little menu here you've got your main items right here and then your smaller menus going into here it does use the Thunar file manager I threw on a couple games. I, I actually have the Java version of Minecraft 1.0 that I wanted to see if I could get it to work, which it does. I do have to figure out why I'm getting some latency issues with it. It works great inside my Gen 2 partition, but I was having some trouble within this one, and it could just be the way I laid it down. I'll have to, figure, or it could be something to do with the way uh, I have my Java down here. Of course, the GIMP. And then I, I installed Clementine Simple Screen Recorder, GUVC View, it came with VLC. It was interesting to note that inside of Network, it actually gives you some options 
about your browser, whether or not you wanted to install Chromium, which is what I allowed, or down here you can click on install Google Chrome or install Opera and then you can set your default browser. Um, Office, it did not come with LibreOffice, but I'll explain something about that in a moment. And then of course your standard locations of places, recent files, etc., your settings area. When you first boot into Punchbang, up pops a script that says, okay, well this is just basic. If you'd like to continue running this script at this point, we'll ask you some questions, we'll install some more software for you. When you go through those, you pretty much need to know, of course, what your, your super user password is or have enabled sudo so that you can enable that. And then it'll ask you whether or not you want LibreOffice, whether or not you want to have other applications, and it will go ahead and download those, set them up for you, configure everything so that you can have a pretty nice working machine. Now it did take a little bit of time to set all that stuff up. I think I was running it, and it probably took about a half an hour to go through everything and to pay attention to it and make sure I was doing things right. You know, it's one of those things you don't want to just be saying, yeah, 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 go ahead, whatever. And then all of a sudden you don't know really exactly what you've done. You want to pay attention, read what it says. And it does a very good job of explaining things and putting those applications on there. Once you're done, you've got a very nice working system. Only complaint that I can say that I've run into in regards to Crunchbang is when I installed a couple applications manually such as GUVC View, Clementine, Simple Screen Recorder, I went into the menu and I said um, there's nothing here, it's just blank. So I had to do some Google searches and I found out that Crunchbang does not automatically, or maybe it's not Crunchbang but Openbox, uh, does not automatically place the applications that you've installed in the menu. You actually have to go in and edit the menu yourself. Now this isn't a big deal. It really isn't. I mean, I didn't get scared, you know, light of heart here. I just went into settings and I went down here and I found open box and I found, ah, here's, you know, it told me I could edit the menu.xml. I'm not very familiar with doing that since I'm kind of a newbie to Crunchbang, never tried it before. But if we go on down here to GUI menu editor, it was very easy to go ahead and get the menu editor open and notice, okay, I see what I'm used to seeing when I'm right and clicking and seeing the menu. All right, well, let's go, let's, let's, you can put these anywhere, of course, but let's go to multimedia though. And I said new item, and for instance, for Clementine, typed in Clementine for the label. I wanted to execute the application. Now, a lot of times I was like, okay, well, what exactly do you have to run to do this? Now, some of these, you know, there, there are no brainers. You figure out that, oh, yeah, you just run the file. But it's real good to go ahead and go into the terminal and say, for instance, Clementine. I just start typing in, hit the tab. Okay, Clementine, that's all I need to put in there. Type it in for the execute. There you go. Save it right here. And then when I would right click, go into the multimedia, there was the Clementine. I'd click on it and it should operate. There it goes, sticking it up there. And if we click on it, hey, it's bringing up my music, it's connecting to my multimedia drive, it's pulling up all my albums. You know, it's a little slow because everything's going out to the network drive and, and grabbing it, but otherwise, everything is there. And I do have more, um, so everything has its own little picture. Not sure why those aren't po po popping down, but that's, neither near here nor there. Yeah. Go ahead and close that for now. It does keep it up there. It was no problem at all getting my wireless to work. Pretty easy just to go up into here, click on it, give my WPA codes and all that sort of thing for security and you know, go right on through. The battery widget worked well. Had no issues at all with the setup of getting my system updated. Since it is running wheezy, it runs very stable, you know, very few problems at all. My only complaint would be that I'm lazy and I would prefer to have a menu system application that would automatically find applications I might install and put them in the menu for me so I don't have to hunt them down and then make sure I have the right 
command line. You know, it's like SSR, a uh, simple screen recorder. It goes by SSR, but when you type it in, you've got to type in the whole simple screen recorder for it to work and, and run. So, and, but other applications, for instance, you, you just use a, an acronym for it. So you just need to know what that executable is, be familiar enough with it to make it run. Kind of an interesting thing, for instance, I went ahead in my games area for Minecraft. I had to create a script for Minecraft so that it would work right. Otherwise, it's this long, long thing. And you see here, if we did a quick uh, thing on that there. Uh, and actually, and that's another reason why it's running kind of poorly, is I'm actually running this from my server to see how that would work instead of off of the local drive which is probably why it's kind of flaky a little bit I wanted to see if that was a possibility to do that which it seems to work fine but you see there's the command to be able to run that and it's 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 huge it doesn't matter how wide I make this thing you're not gonna get it all in one line it's a lot of data that it puts in just to run that and uh, get it up and running uh, it works fine it's good so if if you do have problems with long strings and you don't want to put that execute forever ever create a, a you know like this one I created the minecraft.sh and then set it up so that I could just go ahead and execute it straight from here to, to make it run you know just to go ahead and test it and show you guys let's see if I, I've never tried doing like a 3D game or something like that while I was recording but let's see what it does here let's see if it pulls up and doesn't mess up my recording and so there we go Minecraft's popping up there it is Mojang now this is version 1.0 which is free version so that you can utilize it without uh, having to you know we, we have it of course for the the um, tablets and we have both a PS3 and an Xbox 360 because my wife really likes to connect so I, I always kind of cringe when I have to admit that I have an Xbox 360 in my possession I don't normally like to I don't normally like to go that route with Microsoft I wish it was made by anybody else but my wife really liked the idea of the Kinect so for Christmas a couple years ago, I broke down for her and bought her an Xbox 360. And, you know, to be honest, I think Microsoft ought to get out of the operating system business and just focus on their Xbox 360 because it's a nice little unit. If only their operating system could be half as decent as the Xbox 360. You know, I actually find it more enjoyable sometimes to be on the Xbox 360, don't quote me, than the PS3. <laughs> it, they each had their pluses and deltas. I prefer, for instance, YouTube on the Xbox 360 does a much better job than the PS3 does. But on the other hand, I like the way Netflix operates on the PS3 much better than it does on the Xbox. Just the way it is. But here we have it, Minecraft. It's working great. Um, well, not working great. I do have some latency issues. And that can be probably caused by the fact that I'm trying to go through my network to talk to it. And, and run it instead of running it locally because if I run it locally on my Gen 2 side which is where I initially installed it and then said hey I wonder if I could get this on the network and then it wouldn't matter wherever I was at I just point it to that minecraft.sh file I created and it should run and sure enough yeah no matter what what I go into as long as I've got Java installed it runs beautifully so fun little game to get addicted to that's for sure my whole family from my daughter on up and my my son he's too little I don't he's only five years old I don't let him play on the Xbox just yet or the or the PS3 but he sits there and watches and he loves to watch everybody play it and everybody has their own little world and has their own creations and we have to each take turns to make sure everybody gets enough time to play but that's getting off topic crunch bang like I said is a great fun little distribution works really well have had very few problems with it. Thank you all for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. Yeah, as I said in my midweek review when I talked about um, Gen 2 in review, I'm going to try maybe to try to look at some things like that and focus on 
bits and pieces, hopefully not as long. I really want my videos to be less than 15 minutes, 10 minutes, because I know you guys don't have all day to sit there and listen to me just jabber, jabber, jabber. But I do want to get some good information out there about Emerge, the Gen Toolkit, Use Flags, what it's all about, and I hope to go on from there and try to give some good stuff, good tips, tricks, and whatever else you want. This was, of course, a distribution that was requested by one of my um, guys that watch all the time. I have another request for next week, which I know is in my list, but my mind is like a, it leaks terribly, so I can never remember what I want to say sometimes when I'm talking to you guys. But we will have a new distribution next week. This distribution, you'll notice, has come out a little bit earlier than usual. I'm going out of town this weekend. I'm going to be gone for a bit. And I wanted to make sure that I did not leave you guys hanging on a distribution. I will do everything that I can to always upload something on Friday, sometime, anytime, of what I'm looking at. So until next time, whether it's morning, evening, noon, or night, whatever you're having, enjoy it. Thank you for the comments. Thank you for the letters. Thank you for your suggestions. I appreciate this community. You guys are great. It, it's so much fun to be able to talk to other Linux enthusiasts. It's so much fun to, to, to bounce ideas off of and to learn so many new things. Because of your suggestions, I have tried so many different versions of Linux. I knew there's a lot, I, I know there's a lot out there. I, I knew there's a big. Uh, I know there's a big group to choose from. Like I said, I don't think it'll be a problem at all to do 52 distributions in 52 weeks. It's going to be a matter of finding which one I want to do, grabbing it and doing it, and just making sure I make the time to do it for you guys. And I really appreciate everything you all have. Now, until next time, thanks for watching. Thank you for being there, and we'll chat with you later. Bye.